um, I'm not here to do education today. I'm here to do a call to action, okay? Right? And I'm not here to just entertain your head. I'm here to inspire your heart and to see what part you play in the work that you're doing as part of not just the water protector tour, but building bridges for sustainability. Because right now, we're at the crescendo of basically, I, I, if you've heard of Extinction Rebellion, the organ, a, a movement that's doing a big march on DC on September 23rd, we're really at that point. So I'm not here to be political. I'm not here to uh, pretend I'm a scientist. I'm here to inspire you as an event producer, a permaculturalist, as an interfaith minister who did a three-year program uh, on the connections of people between different religions to, to, to leave today to see what part you're doing and what part you can do, okay? So I just want to start off with everybody. Just take a moment now. Put your hand on your heart and just take a breath. I want everybody to be in the heart because, again, there's so much incredible information here and, and really a, a big... Um, round of applause for all the presenters here. I mean, we have the science. We know what the issues are. We know what the solutions are. And now we're connecting dots, okay? So just take a moment, your hand on your heart, take a couple of breaths, and let's drop in together into our common humanity to try to use this opportunity as a, uh, a catapult for real change. So again, my name is Michael DiMartino. And uh, again, by trade, I'm an event producer. And uh, I'm basically, um, over the last four and a half years, I've been doing a podcast and radio and TV show called The Golden Road, which is basically about bridging yesterday with today for a better tomorrow, and even more focusedly on community resilience. How many of you know what community resilience is? Okay, it's a very interesting topic, because in resilience, we talk about food and water security, right? We talk about emergency and conscious preparedness. We talked about things like disaster relief and the community's ability to come back after having these catastrophes happening. We're talking about environmental health. We're talking about personal health. We're learning through this topic of resilience to look at all of the different pieces and parts and put them back together because they're all interconnected, right? Everything is interconnected, right? Show of hands if you believe everything is interconnected. All right, so I don't, have to, I don't have to continue preaching to the choir. So what we're doing right now, myself, with a coalition and collaboration of, right now, over 30 different organizations, uh, nine months ago, we launched the Water Protector Tour. Now, when I started doing my, my TV and radio show, I was broadcasting in 12 counties throughout the Sacramento River watershed. I was also doing a podcast, and that has parlayed into the resilience and now even taking a more narrower focus, we're focusing on water. Because water is the one thing I find that as soon as you talk to people about water and health, they don't instantly go to, well, are you a liberal? Are you a Democrat? Are you an independent? Are you a Republican? Water is something as political as it can be. Water is essential to life and is important whether you're the most wealthiest person on the planet or a homeless person on the street. Water is something we all need. And in the Bill of Rights, you know what? Water is a human right for all of us, okay? So um, what we're doing right now is we're launching this next phase of the Water Protector Tour. And I want to thank Rachel Linden right here from Green Lifestyles Network who helped uh, create this opportunity to speak to all of you today. And uh, thank you all of you for showing up. You know, you could be home watching Netflix and Game of Thrones and doing other stuff, but you know what? You're here. So to be in a room of committed doers, of solutionarians, is why I did the four and a half hour commute this morning to be here to talk to all of you as a wake up call and inspire you to get into action as a call to action. So very quickly, we're doing the water protector tour and we're primarily focused on the Sacramento River watershed. Does everybody here know what a watershed is? Who doesn't? Okay, simple. When a, piece, when a rain drops, wherever it goes into that area, it's a watershed. So we're focusing on my backyard, okay, which is the Sacramento River watershed. I live in Nevada City, California. Okay, so I can give you a lot of details, you know, Sacramento River, 470 some odd miles long. Um, but it is absolutely the lifeblood 
of California, of, of 2.8 million, million people, and even more who live outside of the watershed, and of California's agriculture. And what is happening right near now is nothing less than an all-out assault on our human rights of having clean water, whether it's through environmental toxins, whether it's through privatization, right? I mean, I could go on for a while. So all these things are basically assaulting us. And to tell you the truth, I'm not an activist. I'm an educator. But I cannot stand by and seeing uh, children and communities poisoned anymore by mismanagement and old paradigm, patriarchal, colonial mentality. You guys with me? Okay, some more things about, you know, lots of science. Um, okay, so some of the issues, you can see environmental toxins, mismanagement, privatization, climate change, and extractive industries. Um, these are all the things that are happening. So more than getting into the minutia of issues, I wanna talk about some solutions, okay? But before I go back to, before I go to solutions, what I wanna do is talk a little bit about what the Water Protector Tour is. The Water Protector Tour, much like having Rachel Linden uh, speak today, is a coalition right now of over 30 organizations, all that work with water, participation first and foremost from the pre-colonial inhabitants of North America, from the indigenous communities. So over the last uh, year, we've been in conversation with the Nisanan, the indigenous community from the Nevada City area. We've been in communication with several of the Machupta and Mountain Maidu tribes. We've also been in communication with Chief Kayleen Sisk and the Winnemum, who live at the headwaters of, of the Sacramento River and Mount Shasta, along with Miwok and other indigenous tribes that have been doing water protection far more successful for longer than our colonial mentality can maybe even understand, unless you're really a scientist and you study these things. So we're building a coalition of indigenous people, organizations, and people that are policy makers within government. And I wanna acknowledge the mayor of Mount Shasta, the mayor of Nevada City, the Nevada County Board of Supervisors, and also the Butte County Board of Supervisors who are already coming into the fold to say, yeah, why do we spray the headwaters with Roundup? every few months and then watch people come down and play in it and get bottled water from that. Like, why do we do that? Because the system is broken. And I'm here as an inspiration and a wake up call that the issues are huge, the solutions are simple. Nature gives us the solutions. It doesn't matter if we don't have to throw billions of dollars at it. The solutions are simple. Unless you live in paradise where right now, unfortunately, they're talking about a year and a half to two years of remediation work uh, just on the soil and water, the amount of contamination that's there and probably over a half billion dollars to remediate from the Paradise Fire. So, Sacramento River Watershed Water Protector Tour. We've been doing it softly for the last nine months to build the coalition and now we're coming public. September 21st and 2nd, we're doing a series of events in Sacramento. We're doing a boat tour of the Delta to make people aware about the Delta Tunnel Project, which is a horrific, bad mismanagement plan, okay? And if you see here, more information about the Delta. Who has heard of the Sacramento Delta? Great, most of you. It is one of the most pristine estuaries in the world, home to an amazing diversity of wildlife, some of the most fertile farmland in California, and it's being threatened by the majority of the water and the tunnels being put in and decimating an entire community of people. So one of the things we're doing, we're doing a boat tour. We're taking people out on boats and buses to educate them. We're working on a documentary film. And then the whole weekend culminates, and I want to, again, this is a call to action. I'm inviting people September 22nd to come to the state capitol, not as a protest, not just to wave signs, but to begin the next year of the Water Protector Tour 2020, to start to bring together the science with the indigenous community and the organizations to start getting the media, and that's my specialty, media, live streaming, podcasting, to get the media to help wake up the people who aren't here and are too busy doing other things to be able to assimilate and 
bring some of this information into wisdom and into action. So, so some of the big poster childs of the tour is, of course, the Delta Tunnel Project. Another one of the issues right now, Crystal Geyser just put a bottling plant in, in McLeod, where they're planning on pulling out a half billion bottles of water in plastic bottles every day to ship to Asia. Nothing against Asia, I'm just saying, with zero benefit for the local community. If anything, probably creating about a half dozen part-time jobs. So they're basically tapping the Sacramento River watershed, which will have devastating effects, not only on the surface water of the Sacramento River, but also the groundwater. This, this is really, I can't even tell you after the research and the information I found how horrific the idea is. So we have some of our poster childs, the Delta Tunnel Project, the Crystal Geyser Bottling Plant up at the Headwaters. I live in Nevada County. Every year in Nevada County, the Nevada Irrigation District sprays thousands of gallons of Roundup along the banks of the irrigation canals where livestock drink, where children play, where all the water goes into our, basically into our drinking water and actually feeds to organic farms in our county that are using the toxic water. So that's another one of our poster childs, along with trying to give support to Paradise and looking at alternative remediation efforts. That's what the Water Protector Tour is, a coalition of great people finding solutions for what's happening in our area. So here you can kind of see again, I, didn't, I sacrificed a little bit of time, but you can kind of see, uh, recently Gavin Newsom said, well, we might have to downgrade uh, two tunnels to one tunnel, but no tunnels. So, so in a call to action, I want to inspire you to get information, come on the boat tour with us, come on the bus tour, and actually see the impact of what this is doing, okay? I'm going to make it really short here. Okay, the end of the river, Sacramento River flows into Susan Bay. Um, there's a whole amount of issues with currently the Trump administration's bringing coal trains into East Bay. Oakland kicked them out, but they're bringing processed coal into East Bay and they're dumping it in parking lots. They tried military bases, but Oakland kicked them out. They're literally dumping processed coal in parking lots exposed to low income and minority communities to wait to be exported to uh, sub-equatorial countries, okay? So this is another horror just focusing on the Sacramento River watershed, okay? So right now we currently have uh, incredible partnerships with radio stations, with dozens of um, uh, cable TV stations and also organizations that are doing amazing work. And we're building, every day we're building the coalition. And that's why I'm here to say, what do you do? What can you offer? Advisorship, science, hands-on. The thing I want to emphasize with every event we do, I do what's called edutainment, okay? Keynote speakers, then we have some live music, we have some hands-on workshops. How many people here would love to know how to do a litigational quality water test that could be used to help defend your human rights for clean water? Well, that's what we're doing. That's one of the things we're doing. We're also teaching people about pollinator gardens. Tora Rocha, who used to manage the uh, Lake Merritt Park, who now is one of my neighbors, she goes all around the world and the area doing pollinator gardens. Right now she's installing a three-mile pollinator garden along the Sacramento River in Sacramento underneath the smud power lines to, to help teach people about the importance of clean water, clean soil, and the role of our pollinators around food and water security, okay? So we already have a lot of momentum you can see, this is just the next couple months of some of the things we're doing. The Delta Boat Tour, we're going to, some of us are going to Nevada Irrigation Board meetings. Uh, we're having public forums. We're going to be at many other events because, you know, it's not about what we're doing. It's about building bridges with other doers and solutionarians to help create the environment and the world that we want. So we do have some flyers here. I want to just leave a quick minute for Q&A. Um, and since I started late, she said she'd give me an extra few minutes. We have flyers about the Delta Boat Tour, the Water Protector Stakeholder Meeting at the Fruit Ridge Community Center. That's all on September 21st. And then the 22nd, we're going to be at the State Capitol live streaming our first Water Protector Rally at the Capitol, which is going to initiate the next year of the Water Protector uh, event. 
And uh, I just want to acknowledge someone here. I just want everyone to look and if she could raise her hand. I want to give a big round of applause to Michelle Eggers. Uh, she organized the Eugene Environmental Film Festival. She volunteers hundreds of hours to manage the website and to deal with the, the minutia. Um, so I just wanted to acknowledge her as one of the many people that are helping this happen. And then the last thing I want to say, excuse the graphic, it got switched with a lower resolution. One of the other things we've created is called the Source Directory. After doing radio and TV in the Sacramento River watershed for four and a half years, we just created a directory, you can go there right now, of over a thousand individuals and organizations doing uh, resilient and regenerative work in our community of the Sacramento River watershed. And we make this available to anyone worldwide. And every day we're getting more members. So we're creating a network. And more than just a network, we're bringing in the information, the science. And more than that, we're doing public events. And even more than that, we're empowering people with stuff you can do in the convenience of your home. Stop using toxic cleaners. Stop using toxic cosmetics. Stop contributing to the horror of microplastics. Stop spraying the weed killers. There's solutions to all these things. So we're super excited about it. And again, I want to thank Rachel for um, helping to create this opportunity to speak today. Uh, after this, we're going up to the Heirloom Seed Conference, and then we're off to Bioneers. And um, I really hope you take a flyer and get involved because, um, you know, water is life. This is super important. And I just want to say, with total respect to the indigenous communities who have been water protectors for thousands of years, um, when we started to create this next year of the event, I met some of the people that were instrumental in the Standing Rock. He said, in Standing Rock, you know what? We lost. They put the pipeline in. Even though they water, they water cannon elders and seniors and children, even though they rubber bulleted people, they fought for their right to clean water. He said, we lost. So I came to California to help wake up California about they need to protect their water. And at that point, the whole concept of water protector really galvanized as a name. So I do want to say there's been no cultural uh, co-opting of other indigenous movements. We're working hand in hand in partnership with them and many other organizations. So I just want to thank everybody for your time and your attention. And if anyone has any questions or anything they'd like to say, let's just take another two or three minutes and I'll be here for the rest of the day available to talk. But please, I hope you feel inspired. I hope you feel called to action. And whether it's in the watershed of Sacramento River or where you live, we're creating a template that can be used. And we're also creating a coalition. And we're also talking about creating an online certified water protector curriculum with all the different pieces that anybody can sit in the comfort of their own home and scroll through on the computer to become educated and empowered outside of corporate media, fake news, and the brainwashing that's happening to so many of us in, in the world at large. So thank you very much. I didn't even get to do my stand-up routine. That was so quick. What happened? So any questions or any... any uh... Great. All right, so these, these are the flyers real quick. You know, again, I'm trying to... We just did an earth stock event in Nevada City. It was a zero-waste event. No styrofoam, no plastics. People would show up like, oh, where do I put my food? So, so we're, we're trying to cure ourselves of the hypocrisy. I, I, I dread even making flyers. And, but anyways, we, we brought a limited amount. You can go to waterprotectortour.org. This is a flyer for the whole tour. Uh, 15 months, 10 counties, over 20 events. Okay? All the information is here. And we also have flyers for the event at the state capitol. And we also have flyers. If you want to come on a very unique experience of the Delta with Barbara Daly and Dan Bacher, who are the most educated, knowledgeable people to talk about the Sacramento River Delta, a thousand miles of waterways, 200 species of birds, fish, wildlife. It's our most diverse. <laughs> it, 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 I can't, it's a heartbreak to think about it. But if you want to come on the tour, you can sign up and have an amazing experience and see firsthand uh, what we're trying to preserve. So, any other questions or input? So, if you want more information, just go to waterprotectortour at gmail.com, right? 
and you can also call. We have our phone number. And I encourage you to check out the website because one of the things we're doing on the website is we're making it a resource of everything water in the Sacramento River watershed. So even if organizations aren't joining a coalition, we're at least out of respect and acknowledgement for their work, letting people know how to connect with them so you can get the solutions. Maybe just two quick last ones, right, right there. Nevada Irrigation District is just one county that puts in uh, six to eight times a year. They put Roundup on the banks of the Irrigation District. They put heavy metal-based algicides into the water. And I will tell you, the majority of filtration and water processing systems do not take those out of the water. And even before they reach the water processing stations, the children are going in the irrigation ditches and swimming, the livestock go into the ditches, and a lot of the organic farms depend on those ditches to uh, irrigate their organic farms. You know what, when you use glyphosate infected water and stuff with heavy metal in it on organic farms, you know what, that's, that's serious injury and potentially litigational um, activities. Well, to be, to be really quick, uh, bioremediation, uh, there's a ton of things, everything from uh, uh, mushrooms like Paul Stamets talks about, to hemp, to bamboo, to even essential oils. Also doing things like, uh, if you've, who's, who here saw the, the biggest little farm recently? Wow, incredible, right? Nature has an intelligence, we just have to give it the condition to regenerate itself. That's why we have to go beyond sustainability, we have to become regenerative, just sustaining the system is crumbling. We can't sustain. We have to begin to regenerate. So it's just the wisdom within nature itself. There's also a lot of other techniques, like people can use water filtration at their home. There's so many ideas. And I, I just want to give a big shout out right next door. Michael Collins spoke at our event. And he's created a, a, a compost-based product to help regenerate soil. The solutions are out there. They're simple. We don't need to throw trillions of dollars on it. We just need to exercise common sense. And one, one more question, because I talked to this gentleman briefly in the hall who's actually working in the Sacramento River. Uh, yes, it does, actually. And, and if you want, just if, we give out a lot of sponsorships into the source directory if you can't afford it. But you can be in the directory for as low as $25 a year. That's what helps subsidize this work. You know, we're not a well-funded nonprofit organization right now. We're not a huge company. This is grassroots coalition building and collaboration, although we're looking at different business models right now to take us into the 2020, and that's a big part of my relationship with uh, Rachel Linden and Green Lifestyles Network and many other people. So everybody just put up your right hand real quick. Reach back, pat yourself in the back for being awake and for doing what you do. And I feel so honored to be able to have a few minutes in front of this room of solutionaries and doers. Thank you so much, have a great afternoon.